Welcome to the Contemplative Life. Three pastors, friends, and spiritual companions help us explore spirituality through a contemplative lens. I'm Christina Roberts. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm Christina Kaiser. We're glad you joined us. Hello, it's great to be with you. Today we are talking about the importance of play. And I think it's important to note that oftentimes in our imagination around contemplative practices, we might tend to think about silence, quiet, stillness, which certainly is an anchor part of the contemplative practices. However, I think it was Christina Kaiser several episodes ago that named that, gosh, there's so many different ways to engage in the contemplative, including you know, movement and art and all these different pathways. And so I thought it would be fun today to talk about the importance of play and the role that that has in contemplative living. You know, I would say that the importance of rest and rejuvenation is gaining more attention, but I've noticed that sometimes when someone recognizes, okay, I do need to rest in my life, I do need to engage in these ways outside of work or whatever, almost there's like a blank stare of like, I don't even know what to do. I'm so out of touch with play and enjoyment and what I would do for pleasure that it almost becomes like a stress factor of then having to figure that out. So I thought today we could talk about play and the contemplative and what comes up for us. I am very thankful that we're getting to have this conversation because when I was a kid, um, the notion of rest was very important in our family, but rest really was like you turn everything off and you're quiet and you take a nap, which uh, was not my favorite experience as a young person. Like you just waited for the grown ups to wake up, really. Um, so it is really in my grown up life that I've been able to begin to cultivate what does rest look like and what are the many possible ways to rest? What is even what is the good coming from this? I was reading a book recently called Wild Mercy by Mira by Star. She has a whole chapter on rest. And um, there's this little like reading that she goes through about like lay in my lap. And, and it goes on to talk about how like as you are resting, like things will kind of sort themselves out. Like I, some of this burden will lift off and, solutions will appear like and it's just so it's like it's like going down a lazy river the way that it's written it's so beautiful so i am very thankful we're talking about this today yeah i mean i wouldn't necessarily associate play with contemplative uh whenever first looking at it but uh, as you guys talk about play the importance of it in fact whenever i was doing my spiritual direction training you know they listed four of the main reasons why people come to spiritual direction and to be contemplative and to do the inner work look at the inner landscape and i only remember three of those reasons uh i, I have notes somewhere so i can find the the fourth reason but um one is because they're in a wilderness experience and they're needing someone to help them uh, identify God in the places of wilderness. The second one is like opening up your schedule to find play, to be able to be recreation, like whether it's, you know, um, if it's paying more attention to your hobbies, painting, or even doing something out in the garage, like what does it look like to identify what are the passions uh, that are outside of like your vocation that you need to pursue? And they called it play, finding fi finding room in your schedule for play. And then wisdom seeking is another reason. But yeah, I find, I find that I would not associate play uh, uh, with contemplative. I, I would associate rest with contemplative, but what I hear you guys painting is a picture of how uh, their rhythms, that rest and play are rhythms 
that are super important to our life. So that's one thing I find interesting as we talk about play in the contemplative. It's interesting, Chris, that you note and use the word recreation, because I think that there is something that when we play, there is a recreating that goes on inside of us. And I think sometimes, again, we don't associate that. And so it's helpful to have examples. And oftentimes when I'm doing rest and renewal retreats, I have a handout that it comes actually from Dr. Stuart Brown, and he identifies eight different types of play. I'm sure I got this from a parenting book somewhere, but it is completely relevant for any age. And I like this because it expands, you know, I think we can think of play as, you know, maybe one or two ways, maybe doing sports or something like that. But collecting things, for example, was one of the types of plays that he named and people that like to collect stamps or rocks or um, maybe it's vinyl records or things like that. And it's like, oh, that's really interesting that that was something that he named. And so I think oftentimes expanding our idea of play, and it does, there's something rejuvenating in, in that. And so I think part of the reason why rest is included in contemplative practices is because we need mental breaks, we need physical breaks, we need opportunities where our soul can kind of lay low in the normal day-to-day -day stuff and have that recreating, that rejuvenation type of aspect. And so I think getting in touch with, yeah, these are the things that I really like. Um, I was recently sitting with someone who was going on a vacation and I think there was like this pressure of, I've got it, like I've been working really hard. And so I've got to make this vacation like really good because we haven't been able to travel. And and so through talking, we recognize that this person really in, like loves ice cream, like favorite thing, had ice cream at her wedding, like loves ice cream. And so at the end of our thing, decided that one of the ways that she was going to rejuvenate was to go to as many different ice cream shops that she could in these towns that she was visiting and to determine like, this is my favorite gelato place, or this is my favorite flavor. And just to, and like her, her face was lighting up, recognizing that this counts as play. Like, again, it doesn't have to be, she doesn't have to like go play pickleball. She can look at different ice creams and that could be rejuvenating for her. So again, I think it's important to expand our idea of that and, and the benefit that it brings. Oh my gosh. I want to go to that wedding. I love ice cream. <laughs> yes. I, I think there are times in, in my life too. And I'm so glad that you mentioned something like collecting stamps. Um, not because I collect stamps, but sometimes I make puzzles as part of my own experience of play, because it's this delight. It, I love colors and there's often surprise in puzzle making. Like you just, the way that a puzzle gets cut, you just don't imagine necessarily that that piece is going to go where it goes. And then there's this kind of, it's like, I often make them intentionally. Like I pick something that has a sentimental meaning or it, it hits it like I as some of you will know I love sparkle and this kind of thing so it hits it because there's a little piece of sparkle in there or something so it, it incorporates but then also the family will kind of tootle in and out like <laughs> nobody ever has the amount of like stamina to stick with it for too long but you know there's this connection piece that happens as we all sit together and so it's not stamp collecting, but it's not kicking a ball either. And I only do it in these special times because of how, how, in, you know, how much that I invest of myself in it. So yeah, puzzle making is definitely one of mine. Well, I don't know if going on an adventure is, is, is a type of play, but for me, you know, just setting out, not knowing where the road is going to take you um, with, you know, a group of friends or you know, mo most recently my family. And so, you know, I find that if, if we can have a sense of adventure and, you know, stumble into good things, uh, that, that is very restful and playful for me. Um, and it allows me to sharpen my awareness, right? Like what, what is, what is it that we're going to stumble into looking for good things, and I find the awareness piece is huge for, you know, um, our lives. What, like what's bringing joy, what's bringing, uh, you know, things that are, are giving rest and things that are giving joy and satisfaction. And so for me, you know, I find you know, going, setting out on an adventure and having my awareness sharpened to, to discover unknown treasures is important. So, yeah. And I think, 
you know, talking about connecting with others through our play is I think what you're naming too, Chris, which is important. And it's important for our own well-being and our own tanks being filled up, but also just thinking through how that opens up richer relationships and conversation and depth. And I remember years ago when Chris and I were first married and we had a pool table just off of our kitchen and um, he would have people over to play pool. And a lot of times I would be in the kitchen kind of chatting with people. And he said, you know, Christina, it's interesting because um, when your friends come over, you guys can sit at the kitchen table and just go deep quickly. You've, you've got just a cup of coffee and all of a sudden you're sharing deeply about your life. That's not the case with some of my guy friends. We need to shoot pool for a while. And after maybe a couple rounds of pool, we don't have to look at each other in the eye. We're looking at the, you know, the pool table. But through that conversation emerges and we start to get deep because we have the pool that is is part of our engagement. And so I think that that's interesting as well. I was recently listening to a podcast about parenting and the importance of play with children. And, you know, and I, I think sometimes there can be some guilt around the fact of like, I don't like to sit on the floor and play with my kids or whatever type of play that they're into. And also, and, and that's real and, and not to shame anybody. And also, I think that there's opportunity to try to find those spots where, okay, you like this type of play and and I, I, I like it or I can tolerate it or whatever. And so can this be a point of connection where you feel bonded and your kid's love tank is being filled up, your tank is being filled up. And then I think from that comes dynamic and, and good conversation because there's a, a sense of love and that was fun. You know, whenever we have a fun day with a friend or a pal or whatever, you just, you know, we talked about brain chemicals a few episodes ago, your oxytocin is high and you're doing really well. And I think it, it promotes some other types of connection as well. Yeah. I think the words connection and awareness have both come up and it becomes such a big deal. Like we make Saturday breakfasts in our house. They're kind of this big highlight. Um, so it's, it's ritual, really, right? Like everybody knows it's coming. Everybody expects it. Everybody looks forward to it. Um, but I have found there's an intention that I have to set additionally then to like not teach anybody how to use a knife at Saturday breakfast because that just changes the whole dynamic. So it really, it, we set a, a tone and a purpose and then we kind of stay inside of that ritual or else it's not it's not special it's not set apart like we can teach cutting or whatever at any other meal but yeah that notion of the ritual is i think i didn't understand ritual for many many years i and and i'm starting to realize like anything that we do on purpose with intention regularly you know, even if it's that like, oh, I, I lit this candle. Uh, and as I was reading that book, Wild Mercy, there's many and, and they're symbolic. They have a meaning. Like when the wine comes over the cup, it has a meaning and a purpose and that we can do these same things uh, in our own lives. So Saturday breakfast is also one of those stories for us. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up ritual. I think one ritual that, that we've had in our life is, uh, Saturday or whatever day off we have outings with our bikes. We pack, we pack our bikes up, we put them on the bike rack and we head out to some unknown destination and we bike for a while. And, you know, we've had different seasons of that. And, you know, I was asking myself the question of why, why, cause we did it recently and it was great. It was, it was, it was good fun. And I, I had to, to ask myself, why didn't we do this anymore? And I think that's important too, because you look at why your ritual isn't working. And I think, you know, our kids were at, at a time in their life where the complaints were so, uh, you know, life stealing about, you know, getting to get, getting, getting in the van going to, I don't know what it's going to be like. I don't know any of this stuff. I don't want to do it, you know? And so it, became increasingly more challenging to to get out the door but we tried it again recently and you know i think that's great to revisit some of the rituals that have been life-giving you may have to set them aside for a while because of a season of life or whatever but uh, i really look forward to maybe this new season of you know setting off on bike adventures um and you know i'll have to evaluate have to see what the uh the complaint level is, or maybe it's non-existent. Maybe it, it'll be right up everyone's alley. But I think that's an important point you bring up. 
Yeah, I appreciate what both of you are naming because I do think, Christina, you're right. It can, we can easily slip back into work mode, teaching mode. This is going to be a teachable moment for my kid rather than, no, we're just going to enjoy a pancake right now. It doesn't matter that I I'm teaching you a kitchen skill. It doesn't have to be utilitarian. And I think to your point, Chris, too, you know, as part of your family, there was the complaints in the van, but then every time we did the bike ride, everybody had fun, but it was like sort of this effort to get out the door, the effort to pack the picnic or to do the thing. And so I think play is with, you know, there is some cost involved or some boundaries or some effort that we have to put into it. So I think sometimes it's like, I, I don't know, it's easier to just not do it maybe because of, of those things. And yet once we do it, once we go on the vacation, it's fun. Or once we do the outing or whatever it is that you're naming. And so I think that that's important as well, that there's some effort to it. And, you know, even the reevaluation of, you know, Chris and I recently were just discussing this with our dates and there was a season where um, breakfast dates were like a highlight for us, you know, when the kids were in school and evening dates are hard, but we would enjoy uh, weekly breakfasts. And just recently, it's like, you know, that's not doing it for me anymore. I think I'd rather like do something physical and active together. Breakfast can maybe be a part of that, but like sitting across from you right now in the summer isn't really doing it for me. And so it's like, okay, let's try something else. Let's switch it up. And then we can maybe come back to that. So I think it's important to acknowledge this is part of my fun and maybe it needs to be tweaked a little bit to really be rejuvenating. I really appreciate being able to name that seasonal aspect because right now we really are in a time of the year where going out and there just is a different rhythm and that's okay. It's that freedom to be able to allow it. We've talked a little bit about that rejuvenation aspect, but sometimes this rotation of things that is part of what brings it alive and makes it so exciting. But similar, right? When we put up holiday decorations, we get excited about it. We get equally excited to take them down, you know? So there is that uh, level of moving from one season into a next and, and being able to be flexible in the midst of it as part of the fun, Um there is a person I read recently who was talking in the context of something else like grief, something, a uh, struggle, but they too were talking about going on vacations and how stressed out people tend to become around the planning aspect, how much work it takes just to get ready to go somewhere and do something fun. And uh, they were kind of uplifting. How does one have a restful experience overall? And they were saying, it's really this ability to be in the present moment now that we will feel most rested when we are able to be where we are right now, as opposed to always looking forward. And so that has really stuck with me because I am definitely planning, thinking, trying to put everything in good order. This is my new, my new ideal, right? To try to not do that and to just live into this moment and see what kind of rest can come of it. And I think also even, you know, I know we're talking about friendship, relationships, family, even in the workplace, I think it's important to have, you know, it's, it's you know, some offices where they have the joke of the day or Friday bagel day or, you know, lunch out or, you know, some offices that have fun recreational uh equipment in the building, those sorts of things. And so I do think it, it breaks it up. It makes life again, zesty, interesting, joyful, you know, joy is one of the, the, hopefully the outcomes and the fruit of the spirit is joy. And I think cultivating different ways of play to incorporate that seems really important to our conversation as well. Well, thanks so much for this interesting conversation around play. Um, for those that might be interested in that handout that I use at retreats on play, there's a couple of different ways that you can get a hold of that. So depending on how you listen, if um, if you click on the show notes, there's a link to the show notes where you can sign up for our newsletter and we can send that to you via that vehicle. Or if you want to go to info at boundarysc.com, we can, you can just put play in the subject line and we will send you that PDF. Um, hopefully that would be a great resource to kind of get your thinking going on different ways that you can play. So thanks for a generative conversation. And now we're going to transition to the part of our podcast where we talk about what we are into this week. So friends, what are we into? Well, uh, I have been into uh, Love Tank and Health Tank. Uh, and what, what that is, is uh, recently 
uh, I've had a lot of congestion, a summer cold or something like that. And uh, my my throat has hurt and I've been coughing a lot. And so my son says, Dad, how are you feeling? How's your tank? And, you know, I would say, you know, I'm at 50 percent. And he goes, OK, you need anything? And I'm like, no, I'm good. And then we you know, he, he's wanting to know my my health tank. And then he's been giving me hugs and asking, how's my love tank? Is it full? And then I'll tell him a, a percentage. And usually it's lower than 100. So he'll give me a lot of hugs to get me up to 100%. So me and my son have been playing percentages with, you know, energy tank and fun, uh, and love tank. So that's what I've been into this week. That sounds like the best caretaker ever. Oh my goodness. I love it. <laughs> oh, well, we, I think I had mentioned not too long ago that we were hoping to get an apple tree. It arrived. We got it yesterday. It is now in the ground. And um, now we are into learning how to water a newly planted tree because there are tricks to this. You can't just plant it there and walk away, it turns out. So uh, I've been looking at multiple websites to get the optimal watering plan for a brand new planted tree. And then apparently, like, we'll just, you know, we'll get some apples this year. And then every year you get 40 more apples on average. So this will be the gift that keeps on giving. I can't wait. Nice. I like all of your agricultural adventures, Christina. They often appear on the podcast. Um, well, I am into Legos. And as part of this play theme, we have decided as a family to do a Lego competition. So yesterday we went to, we have a, a used Lego store place in, in Madison. And so we all went and um, the kids picked out a new figurine. And then we got uh, four of those new kind of plate things that you established. So our theme is going to be vacation, anything to do with vacations. And currently the kids are sorting out the Legos and then we'll each get to pick our pile of Legos to use for our competition. So I'm really excited about this. So I am into all of the good things that Legos have to offer. Uh, well, thanks so much for listening to the podcast. Um, until next time, make it a great week. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, we invite you to stay connected by signing up for our Foundry Spiritual Center newsletter, where you can learn about even more programs and offerings. You'll find a link to subscribe in the show notes or visit us anytime at foundrysc.com. Thanks again for being with us. We hope you have a great week.